Hi everyone, welcome to this Google Digital Garage training session. Create videos for YouTube. Just one second. My name is Benedict. I'm a trainer for Google's free skills training program, Google Digital Garage. Just a bit about myself. I'm an experienced coding specialist and digital skills trainer, as well as having a background in the digital creative industry and have worked in this sector for over 20 years. I would also like to introduce our amazing moderator, Tessa. Tessa is also a Google Digital Garage coach and will be interacting with you and answering just about all your questions via the instant chat to the right there. You can identify the moderator by her name, Tessa, as well as a little blue spanner next to her name. Now, just before we start, I just want to call out a few things to help you today. Firstly, if you're having any trouble viewing the webinar, please do try refreshing the page as at any stage. If you'd like to join the instant chat today, and please do, great opportunity to interact with us and everything, you do need a YouTube account, which you can very easily set up uh, by clicking on the box. You'll see there's a box there on the right for signing up for YouTube. We will be pausing throughout the session to answer the, the some of the different questions. Um, Tessa will hopefully kindly pass on to me from the chat box. So please do feel free to fire away with your questions throughout. Now, just to let you know, we are running this Google Digital Garage virtual training as part of a broader offering of courses. If you would like to check out our schedule of upcoming webinar training, please see information on this in the description below, which links you through to our website. Okay, so that is the housekeeping done. But before I get started with all of this, I do want to ask, <laughs> um, which I can see a lot have been doing already, which is fabulous, um, a lot of chat here, which is really good. So. Um, I'm going to ask you, which you probably, if you've been to any of my other talks, I think Fiona has, I remember your name. Um, you know, I, of course, I ask if you can please introduce where you're actually signing on from. Um, let's see now. Um, <laughs> major conversation going on here. Ukulele and all sorts of different things here discussed. Um, so let me just see now. Um, Okay, I think I'll just get to the bottom just to see. And okay, so we've got Noor Hatton. I remember you were uh, another of my talks here. So welcome from Egypt, I remember. Um, uh, Surayan, uh, welcome from India. Uh, Depi, Leo uh, from Greece, welcome. Excellent, this is great, all different parts. Um, Engine uh, Varol, sorry, my pronunciation, I'm just sort of guessing here. Welcome from Turkey, excellent. Sanjaya from Sri Lanka. Uh, Neil from Chichester, UK, excellent. I know that area uh, for the first time. That's excellent. Um, ukulele from the UK. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were talking about the instrument, but yes, you've got a picture of the instrument there, haven't you? Anyway, let's. Anyone else? Um, supercharged AI creatives, uh, Ritva from London, excellent. All right, this is really great to have all of you here. I'll keep my eye open if there's any more, and I'll sort of mention them as we go. So let me just see now. Interesting. All right. So let me just get started with all of this. So we're going to cover three main areas here. Firstly, finding your niche. Very important. Your niche where, you know, your, your niche is where what you're passionate about and who is your audience. So your niche is your particular area that you um do videos on and everything. Then, of course, we're going to look at the second point here, creating engaging content. You know, We'll look at the steps and take when planning, shooting, some tips along the way, lighting, and all that kind of side. Um, then the third point here, get discovered and track your success. You know, Once you actually get started, you know, the big thing is, of course, get found and track your success, no matter what you're aiming for, whether that be creating a channel for fun or to potentially create a you know, money, revenue, we will look at how you get your channel seen, all the different methods here, all right? Okay, um, let me just see now, okay. Oh, uh, I'm gonna ask you, um, uh, not really an icebreaker, you've already been introducing yourselves, but um, just another further question, just for fun, if you are only allowed to watch one topic of YouTube videos for the rest of your life, what topic would you choose? Be really interesting to see. Um, and do put in the chat box. I can see the chat box, so Tessa, don't worry about copying that. Um, let's just have a look if there are any, anyone. So you just got one top, oh gosh, Fiona, animal. Excellent, okay, great stuff, great stuff. So who else? Um, that's great. 
a lover of animal particularly that's great it's just interesting to see it um i think mine will probably be music i'm a musician i'm a composer so probably that will be it um oh uh engine uh tech videos excellent all right so um Sur surayan uh vlogs okay but we don't have a topic there quite yet um <laughs> vlogs is quite broad um ukulele comedy okay great um Ah, textile, um, San, Sanjaya. Yeah, yeah, absolutely great. I think my wife, actually, she's quite into textiles and sewing and everything. She got a gigantic machine downstairs once she got into sewing. Um, Nuran, uh, lifestyle and mental health. Great stuff. Really good, good, good. I like it. I like it. Uh, often what we need, particularly nowadays, what with the, um, you know, with COVID-19, all sorts of challenging things in our lives. Um, Tessa? She loves the answers. Great stuff. <laughs> I was just going to see what Tessa says as well. Okay, so be thank you so much for that. It's really interesting to see the different topics which you would particularly be into to follow. Okay, um, let us now move on to um, this. Now, before we get on to that, uh, there is a great opportunity, free one-to-one -one mentoring, which is available from Google. I'm afraid at the moment it's only small business or charity in the UK. Hopefully this will eventually um, expand to the rest of the world, and I think we hope so. But for now, at the moment, it's in the UK. So if you are part of a small business or charity in the UK, um, you can sign up for g.co forward slash UK mentoring. Um, so you know do join that um and we one of us will give you uh, assistance advice and all that kind of side so it's a great opportunity um tess is giving you the link there to help you all right um so great opportunity with that all right um well obviously we'll help you with different things you know whatever stage your business at you know business plan or whatever it might be okay let us get started with this now youtube is where people are watching now in fact, actually, YouTube is the world's largest video network and the second largest search engine behind Google. <laughs> the platform enables you to share your unique stories and build connections. Now, stories, don't get me started on stories. I love films, so of course, that's a you know, major area, of course, of stories. So over 2 billion logged in users actually visit YouTube each month, meaning almost one third, one third of the internet. Every day, people watch over a billion hours of video and generate billions of views. Now, YouTube is the second largest search engine after Google, as I mentioned already. 500 hours of video uploaded every single minute. Now, of course, being present on YouTube gives you a voice, very, very important, and an opportunity to actually connect to your audiences, okay? So let's have a look here now. So let's have a look now youtube's mission this particularly is really youtube's mission of course as you know google um well google runs as well youtube as well and but of course they are quite sort of distinct in some ways as google and then there's youtube and um youtube is of course run particularly with the videos and all that kind of side so youtube's mission is to give everyone a voice and to show them the world now these are youtube's four essential values of freedom very very important Freedom of expression is the first one. On YouTube, people can express themselves and share their story with the world. The idea that everyone has something important to say, so important. Now, YouTube believe that people should be able to speak freely, share opinions, foster open dialogue. And, you know, that creative freedom leads to new voices, formats and possibilities. This is the whole thing. Second one is freedom of information. Everyone should have easy, open access to information. And that, and that video is a powerful force for education, building, understanding, and documenting world events, big and small. Whether your passion is cars or cakes, there is space for you and your passion on YouTube. I don't know about you, but often when I'm searching for things, I will, of course, Google it, but I'll often YouTube it as well. So I'll look for someone explaining it to me. Often it's easier to follow and often more inspiring as well. So freedom of opportunity. On YouTube, anyone can follow their passion and actually create something that everyone can watch. Everyone should have a chance to be discovered, build a business and succeed on their own terms and that people, not gatekeepers, decide what is actually popular. This is the whole thing. It's the people, not the gatekeepers. It's the people. Okay. 
I'll come down. Freedom to belong. Everyone should be able to find communities of support, break down barriers, transcend borders, and come together around shared interests and passions. So, you know, these are so important, these four points. That's why I've gone through, I've read word word exactly the the areas because these are what what stand what these are the principles. This is what YouTube stands for, particularly. Okay. Now, the first step to getting started on YouTube is to define a message for your video by finding your niche, your area. Okay, so find your niche. Point one, let's get started with this. Okay, so here is understanding your what, why, and who. Okay, uh, what is your channel about? Why are you creating content? Is it for fun, potential work, document your experiences, share your experiences, you know, have a have a focus, a new hobby? What is it particularly? And then who is your audience? You know, who's actually going to watch your content? So important. This will really help you to decide to, you know, the tone and the style of your videos. All right, creating a full and rounded idea of what you're actually doing you know, why you want to do it and who you're aiming it at helps you really to focus your attention and create content with purpose. Very, very important. All right, let's go through each of these different points. Let's start with what. Okay, define your passion. So what is your channel going to be about? Now, one of the best things about YouTube is that you can really engage with and grow a community, no matter what you're passionate about. It is a form of social media. This is the thing, whether it's comedy, sports, fashion, gaming, food, or simply everyday life. Now, through YouTube, you have the power to connect with a large and diverse audience with the same passions as you which is inspiring. Now, determine your passion. What are your values and beliefs? What are you passionate about? What is your story? Story. Uh, and you say no more. <laughs> All of these different things. And if you're not sure what you want your channel to be about yet, searching through content you enjoy watching and thinking about subjects that excite you is a great place to start. You know, look, what do you like watching already? And then, of course, you can start to... Maybe see a unique setting point, or you know, of course, obviously it doesn't have to be with the money, but you could be you could be finding a way that you can provide that, which is you know, um, different, your own style, and then okay. So you can also research what is trending on YouTube for inspiration as well. That's another area. Now, one of the key ingredients to success is being passionate about what you make. So important. The first step is to decide what your YouTube channel is going to be about. Now, once you know what you want to talk about, next, we need to think about why. Why? Okay, so um, before you do anything, reflect on your channel's mission, all right? Your channel's mission. Why did you uh, join YouTube? What do you hope to actually accomplish, you know, with your content? Why are you, current, why are you creating content? Ask yourself what you're actually aiming for. Now, whether you want to sort of build awareness of your passion, influence, inspire your viewers, entertain people, or just simply have people love what you're doing, creating content gives you a chance to positively influence your audience and build trust, which ultimately grows loyalty with the audience. So important. Now, before you start to create content, you need to be clear on your goal. If you are clear on your goal first, it makes it a lot easier to create your steps to get there. All right, now we've got here particularly um, three examples. Identify your goal. I want to inspire people to love and cook soul food. There we go. Uh, Mama Cherry. All right. In fact, let me just give you a better chance to be able to see this. There we go. Um, and then, for example, I want to create a community of ad ad adult nostalgic toy collectors. Super Sorrel. There we go. I want to share my passion for cleaning cars. Excellent. I wish I knew this person. <laughs> Sorry, yes. No, but all of these different things, of course, you're sharing your particular passion, and there will be other people in the world who will have a similar passion, so it's finding them. All right. So, um, and also, just with the Mama Cherry, we can, for example, I want to inspire people. So welcome to my channel together with my family, foster children and friends. We will be sharing soul food recipes, cooking tricks, hit tips, hacks, 
all received with love. And then we've got Super Sorrow, a YouTube channel aimed at adult nostalgia uh, toy collectors. Posts daily bringing toy content and action figure reviews seven days a week. He says, I unbox things so you don't have to. So it gives them that thrill of, you know, unboxing the thing, seeing it as it as it comes out of the box. Detailing world. And then, of course, um, you know. All right. So I'm going to move on to the next. Find your what and why. Okay. If you could share in the chat, you know, your what and why, that would be really nice. Because the point is, you know, I mean, obviously, I'm I'm talking to you. I'm talking a lot, but the point is, is, this is a chance for you to come up with the different things yourself, play around with the different ideas. What is what is your your what and your why? Um. Uh, I'm oh great, we've got Fiona already. I'm before I even asked. So I am planning to make things as seamless as possible. I will note it. Strategy. Okay. Yeah. But what is, what are you? What is your what and what is your why? Sorry if you've put it already. Um. Oh yes. Sorry, uh, Surayan, market research, and look what competitors are doing. Great. Um, please tell me. Uh, I want to create a real and engaging vlogs. Excellent. I think uh, Tess has asked this already. Excellent. Okay, so let's see if there's any more. Oh, uh, yes. Um, Hanam Laudi. <laughs> Camera suggestions? Absolutely. What I recommend more than anything is start with what you've got. Now, one word of Advice. I think I don't think we cover this, but there's getting started with live streaming. We talk a little bit more technically based. Um, as regards camera, you can start with just your, you know, your iPhone or your Android phone. You can do that. Um, the big thing is, of course, with an iPhone, of course, it's a sound over there. Of course, you would need a separate sound. So, if anything, you need a microphone or. A, uh, direction microphone, so it points at you from a distance, so you can't see the microphone there, or like this, like a condenser microphone, you know, all these different options. Um, depends where you are. I mean, of course, I give talks here, I give talks directly to the camera, which is right over there, I'm not walking around, so of course I can use a condenser mic, fine, it depends your particular area. Um, but uh, start with what you've got anyway, don't go spending too much, too fast. Um, Okay, uh, Daniel, my what is video production? Excellent. Why is providing these services to fulfill demand? Absolutely. One of the big things is, I don't know about you, but I often, I mean, obviously I go on the internet to buy, but it's not only to buy. I look for ways of doing things, solutions, uh, making help and making a decision, like, for example, cameras you were bringing up, um, Hanum Laudi, you know what I mean? Then I would look through a lot of the different you know, camera reviews and comparison, which ones work better and all the rest. We've got ukulele, um, training people to reduce stress using the power of laughter. That's wonderful. You know, actually, ukulele, there is actually a laughter yoga. I discovered this with um, um, one of the people who came to one of our big events, um, and she would actually set it up particularly. She suffered a, a quite a major disease. I can't remember what it was, but it ended up with... Um, increase of her, the size of her body just kept, kept increasing um very very difficult one but she found the laughter was a wonderful one a, a wonderful outlet of of and help to her so she started la laughter yoga and it became really popular quite fascinating um past weeks is okay um let me see. Okay, so that's great. So that's just some of the different examples. So, you know, it's really great. Thank you so much for sharing yours. Um, it's really nice because we're, we're here to share the different sides. I myself, I'm a composer. I compose for films. Maybe eventually mine would be, um, you know, providing some films, sorry, videos, YouTubes, uh, particularly explaining those things. At the moment, I'm going through the whole process of um, more learning the different things from other people at present. Uh, but eventually, yeah taking that onto another level. Great, thank you very much for your contribution. Um, uh, so let's see now. Move on to, moving on to this now, so define your audience. It is so important. We always say, no end of times, your audience. <laughs> Who is your audience? So important. Now, um, of course, here is to understand why deciding who your audience is will actually help you reach them as well. Very, very important. Um, 
So in, to in, uh, in addition to why you're telling the story, think about who you're actually targeting. Now you want to identify your audience. Who is going to be watching your channel? Now, if you think about this before starting to create your content, then you can really tailor your communication. You want to be sure that viewers relate to your um, videos, kind of resonate with your videos. So who or where is your audience? Think about all the details, age, gender, parental status, household income, geographic location. Do they like cats, dogs? What is the name of their pet squirrel? You know, you know I mean, you just go as far as you can. So you're building up this picture to help you. What are their behaviors and interests, hobbies, music, movies, sport, history, pets, product, uh, research, and what video content are they really watching? Is it informational, conversational, social, emotional, entertainment? So all of these details at the age, geography, or other characteristics of your audience can really impact what tone of voice you use. All right, now a useful tool to help identify your audience, I highly recommend, is find my audience on Think with Google. So if you look for thinkwithgoogle.com, uh, Tess will provide you there with the link. Welcome, Rahul, from India. I just saw that. <laughs> okay. Um, so... Uh, Tessa, if you provide the link with the Find My Audience on Think with Google, that can really help you masses. Uh, tell about topic for channel. Okay, so, yeah, you need to, <laughs> right. Um, so create a persona. This is a big thing. Persona is a kind of way of, it's a representation of your ideal subscribers, the individuals who will come back time and time again to watch your videos. You know, potentially refer you new subscribers, whatever the content. Maybe, you know, you will always have a persona that your video re videos resonate with. So in that sense, it's important to try to understand, learn and adapt to that persona. The big thing is you, you've got to really picture it. You know, here we've got an example, Rohan's 27, works nine to five, UK car enthusiast, goes to car shows, takes pride in his car, frequents online forums, goes to YouTube to learn, has two kids and is always short of time. I know that experience. <laughs> Okay, so all of those different things, you know, help you masses. And of course, you know, with children and everything, I know, and married and everything, it's a different world as well when you're going through these different changes. So it really does help you always to check, you know, you're creating content that aligns with your passion, your goal, and audience. It's a representation, of course, the persona uh, of your real target audience. So you you want to avoid biases and create it from research. So you really look into this. There are so many different sources to draw from. A good place to start is by def identifying, you know, dem general demographics. You know, where are they? And use Find My Audience to identify pain points, desired experiences, values, goals. Um, if you already have subscribers, use them to create your uh, persona as they resonate with your content. Utilize tools that offer statistical insight into how subscriber behavior translates to the web. We are going to look um, at YouTube analytics later in this section to actually help you with this. And now, if you haven't got subscribers or a channel yet, don't forget to take advantage of YouTube and Google searches, you know. YouTube and Google are the largest search engines, so see which keywords you want to rank for. Excuse me. And figure out why the top search results land at their position. Now, so learn from your competitors or other people who are in similar trades to you. We're going to look at the importance of trends and keywords in the next section of this session. All right, so, so let's have a look here. What my passion is looking after cars. Why I want to share my knowledge and teach others. Who? Persona. Rohan, the car enthusiast who loves his car. Okay, so there's this an example. You know, work out these different things and be as clear as possible. On to questions. Let me just see if there's any questions at... There you go, you see. Tessa, I gather, is answering all of them. So there's, there's no questions for me. Thanks. No, anyway, um, no doubt she'll pass some on to me later because I am a little bit over time anyway. There's so much to communicate with you. It's quite an exciting topic, this anyway. So moving on, let's move on to creating engaging content. Okay, the next step is about creating engaging content from planning to strategy to the equipment you need. Coming back to you, um, let me just look for your name, Hanum Laudi. Uh, so we will be covering that a little bit. All right, so. What do you think makes engaging YouTube content? Ask yourselves this, you know. 
it already helps if you think through this carefully. Why do you enjoy watching YouTube videos? What makes you subscribe and share? I'm asking all of you that now. Um, of course. Oh, story. Thank you, Fiona. Yeah, good point. Excellent. If there is no right or wrong here. You know, it's just about personal preference. Pull out, you know, the, the thing is, pull out some of those different videos you've seen and think, what did they have? What? Why did you like watching them? Um, how can you match it to your style story? Interesting. Yes, we'll I'll let Tessa chat, tackle that one. Uh, be real, be yourself. Absolutely. Very, very important. It's so important that people come across clearly, you know, that it's authentic. Authenticity, I think you are saying to a certain extent there, Surat Sarayam. Um, it's so important that you something you can believe that it's, it's a person communicating. I mean, I am at the moment, I'm communicating to all of you. Often when you're communicating and you can't see their faces, imagine you're communicating to someone who's really important to you and just, you know, that brings out often the best in you, the best communication. Um, and of course, it doesn't matter that it's a lot of more people that you have that personal element that you're bringing across. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, let's, let's look at a couple of different things. So steps to creating engaging content. First and foremost, research and plan. <laughs> now, of course, research, of course, will give you a strong foundation for engaging content. So important. Planning your content will actually make, you know, creating it easier and save you a lot of time in the long run. So an hour of planning, this well-known phrase I think we have here, one hour of planning can save you 10 hours of doing. You know, really plan it well. Otherwise, you're going to waste a lot of time doing those changes. Those changes. Have your equipment ready. It's very, very important. It's easier than you may think to get started. Now, we will take a look at using equipment you already have as well as ways to enhance your video further. But we will start with what you've got. Always start with what you've got. Okay. Um, and then organize and edit. You know, we'll take a look at the simple sets. Consider when editing as well. And then, sorry, creating your content, of course. Get out and give it a go. Try, try, practice, practice. And then, sorry, on to the last point, organize and edit. We'll have a look at the simple sets. Consider when editing. Okay. All right, we're going to start with research. So, okay. Being well-informed can really kickstart your creative process. Of course, get inspired. Look at those different things that really mean something to you. Explore competitor content. Don't always think of just competitors. You're there to learn from them. Look at what is already being done that you can learn from. But, you know, maybe look for your unique selling point as well. Um, listen to experts or someone with experience and learn from their story. Then analyze the news, social media, um, so social media trends, current events, debates that people may feel strongly about, and determine how these contribute to the conversation. Very, very important. Now, there are many resources available to you to support your research needs. Here are some to consider using. Think with Google. I mentioned already. As mentioned, find my audience as one tool on Think with Google. There are so many useful research resources. You will find the data you know, we, uh, we're exploring and the trends we're actually tracking along with forward-looking perspectives and behind-the-scenes looks at digital campuses across industries, platforms, and audiences. So it can really help you masses. Another side is Google Trends. Now, Google Trends allows you to track the popularity of various search terms over a period of time. You have to keep quite sort of generic in that if you if you produce what's called a long tail keyword, I don't know if you know what a keyword is. A keyword is what you, in the context of the internet, is what you enter into the search query. Um, it could be one or more words. We love animals. So, of course, we've called a long tail keyword. <laughs> Basically, just means a lot of words in that keyword. So, you're getting more and more specific. Now, of course, Google Trends will research masses of different topics. But it's not going to go so far as to go with what's a long tail keyword, something really specific. So um, don't forget, there's things like Google Ads. If you register with Google Ads, you do have Google Keyword Planner you can use to help you. Okay, um, But Google Trends shows over time as well, which is really useful. What particular month people are 
searching for those particular things. Now, knowing this channel could get ahead of the trend by shooting and editing a few few videos in October, let's say, if it's a particularly a lot of them come out in November, November, December, but working out when that when people are searching for it. So scheduling them for release just as the search uh, traffic spikes. You can do it over five, ten years as well to help you to really give a perspective on it. Okay. All right. So. Um, and if you already have a channel, utilize you know YouTube search traffic will all, will allow you to really see what search uh, searches direct to viewers to uh, to your content. Can give you insights and in things like titling. Titling is so important. That title, you know, popular formats and audience familiarity with your name or brand is so important that you use get the title from the search things that what people are looking for. There's another one called exploding topics. These are very popular topics uh, called exploding topics. They're not literally exploding, but of course they're very popular. And you can, to a certain extent, piggyback these different ideas, but it's got to go in the same direction, of course. You know, otherwise people have to go there and go bounce. Okay. So, for example, a channel may notice that a significantly higher number of viewers arrive to the channel by searching for the title of a popular format like uh, meme review for example as opposed to searching for the channel name itself now this would indicate a high view affinity for the format and might encourage the channel to make the former a bigger part of the overall channel's content you're just getting more and more information to help you now youtube analytics you know lets you monitor the performance of your channels when they uh, left the video as well um, you can get things like traffic sources, demographics, views, masses of information. And you don't get too overwhelmed by it. You know, trying to use that to help you. Now, once you've researched your passion audience and everything in between, you now want to think about the type of content to really create. So, now the right type of content for you. Now, consider what resources and time you have. What can you realistically, sorry, realistically achieve within your day to day? You know, how can you make time for your channel and your content? So really deciding what type of content is right for you is very, very important. Now, there are a number of different options. One of them, of course, is one-off videos. You get your message across with a quick, impactful hit, okay? Short form, keeping your video under three minutes. It's great if you plan to be an always-on channel releasing content with a continuous theme in the same format. Longer form video, of course, you can you actually deliver information in a way that keeps people coming back for more. You know, long form typically means longer than three minutes. You know, an example of this would be podcasts, interviews, live stream, uh, documentaries. Don't forget, getting started with live streaming. We have a talk on that to help you. We more talk about the technical side there as well. And then you could have series. You know, you could have part one, part two, part three. You know, have people coming back for that regular post. You know, consistency when you come through with it. And then, of course, you may want to start small and then build as you grow into the into the platform. So, or maybe just try and test a few different styles of content with your audience to see what works. All right, so when deciding what content works best for you, refer back to your goal and why you're creating content and keep going back and checking. It, you know, you, you don't do it and then it's done. No, you've got to keep checking and finding, is this working, is this not? You know, just keep going back. What would be another possible take I could do it or a different angle, a different way of doing it? You just got to keep researching like that. Okay. And of course, it can be really helpful to have a release schedule. Now, one of the things about the release schedule is you know you've got that topic and you plan the different things. It gives your brain a chance to come up with, oh no, maybe I should maybe use that as a topic. That may, you know, all for part five or part ten or whatever it might be. Okay. Um, all right. So consider considering a release schedule. So how many videos can you release per week? You know, what days of the week will you release on? You know, having a set number of recurring releases linked to specific days of the week actually will ensure that audiences, you know, exactly when you can actually expect content to be posted to your channel. And they will look for that, really, they will. Will you rotate content type? You know, some creators rotate content type throughout the week. An example of this will be posting lightweight vlogs, BTS on Tuesdays, and then higher production value sketches on Friday, for example. Um, also, sorry, I missed out there. What days of the week, what days of the week would really work? Do your search uh, to find out as much as possible to help you with that, okay? And then will you link, uh, yeah, so 
uh, with the days, for example, we'll be doing review Tuesday, fun facts Friday, that kind of thing. Um, all right. Okay. So structure your story. Okay. Of course, with stories, there's a lot of writing on stories. There's writing on stories for films, there's stories for all sorts of different things. Story is just, it's a basic, almost a human trait that we love stories. We look out for those stories. So with any story, you're going to have the beginning, which is a hook. It introduces, of course, the aim of the video and make sure all your content tees up to this aim. Okay, very, very important. You want to hook your audience and grab their attention at the beginning so they continue watching. Then you've got the middle, of course, to engage. Now, this is your main content. What are you trying to communicate and why is it important? Everything should ladder up to your core content goals. So important. Now, you may want to identify a problem for your, in, for your viewers and follow it with a solution. And then end, call to action, a clear call to action. Tells your audience what to do next. Subscribe, comment, watch another video of yours. Again, think back to your goal. Actively ask for comments, likes, and subscribers in your videos. Try and focus on the effects of subscribing. It leads to more videos and more promotion. A similarly sketch, you know, more viewed on YouTube. So this may be your final clear NCT call to action, but you will probably want to have mentioned it early on in your video as well. So not everyone who watches to the end. Call to actions can be used throughout your video, very important. Um, I have experienced, I was um, I was training um, uh, the chefs of a gourmet restaurant in Norway. Um, it was quite funny when I started the training, I thought, oh yeah, he looks a bit glum, I wonder if he is. And he turned out to be the chef, the main chef of the restaurant. <laughs> I think part of his thing was like, oh, I don't have to sit through this, I know how to do this. But of course, as I went onto the thing with the colors, the lighting, the, you know, this, that, all sorts of different sides you have when you are filming, he was, you could see him like, oh gosh, I didn't realize there were so many different things. Um, when we got there to script, I said, it's really important. I went through the whole thing, the whole process, you know, the beginning, the intermediate, you know, the engaging and then the ending and all the rest. And of course he was presenting, he was a chef. So I was like, so have you, you, you're going to pro provide the script? And he was just like, I don't need to provide a script. I was like, okay. And of course <laughs> we were there ready with the cameras, you know, all the lighting and everything, the purchase and everything. And of course got to the chef and of course he realized eventually he had to provide a script. It's just so important. So you go through all of this. So it's nice and clear. If you think of a lot of the YouTube videos, a lot of them are presenting like they, they don't need any notes, but that's largely because they've gone through it so many different times. They've, they've, you know, they've thought out, thought it out so clearly, you know, the beginning of the hook, the middle engage, the end, all of those different things they've gone through really clearly. So it's, you know, and one of the best things is, you know, you just go onto YouTube and watch them as some really great, um, great uh, pr uh, presenters for the different videos as well. There's also um, YouTube Creator Academy. YouTube Creator Academy, there's a lot of the successful people on YouTube can really help you with the different things. For video editing apps, um, Fiona, there's different ones. Uh, <laughs> depends the level you want to go with it. You can actually use um, YouTube to actually edit your video. You can actually do that. And you do, there are, there is a lot of music you can use uh, free of use, you know, without royalties and everything. So you can use that. Um, obviously don't, I would <laughs> carefully don't go too far with the kind of complexity of the software they're using. There's um, Microsoft, uh, there is, um, uh, for example, um, I think they're, what's it called again, movies, I think. Um, and then there's also, if you're on um, Mac, there is, of course, um, um, there's many, there's Final Cut Pro, but that's quite a professional one. Then there's, um, there's another one, uh, iMovie, which, of course, you can use, which is totally free. So maybe start with some of the free stuff to help you. Um, there is another one called, um, see if I can remember it. Uh, in fact, let me just move my mouse over to, I've got it somewhere here. <laughs> uh, I have a terrible one of the names. Um, and I must admit, I haven't used it for a little bit of time for videos. Um, there is some, a piece of free software, but it is quite complicated. 
so maybe I won't go into that too much. Um, uh, I might mention it later, but anyway, but start simple. Don't go too far. Um, all right. I hope that helps. Okay, now before filming, you may, you know, I do recommend that you write down what you're going to say. It might seem, no, I don't know what to, I don't know what to do, like with a gourmet restaurant, but it helps. So writing for the video, you know, sp sp speak directly to the audience. You know, what do you want to say here? Now, creators do do this, of course, in different, in various different ways. If you check out the Creator Academy, there's lots of different ways that people do these different things. Um, it could be as simple as a page of talking points, you know, to remind yourself um, of what topics you want to cover. And then depending on the type and complexity of the video, you, you know, you may want a full script. It provides specific dialogue uh, for speakers and can include directions for crew. Just make sure you're not reading like this because I'm reading directly from, I mean, obviously that's the worst the worst you could have of course ideally you've got main points often gives you the opportunity to to expand on those different points and talk about those different points and bring it off the page as it were now if you're looking to create a scripted video you can find sample templates online okay so you can just search for it and find it it's best to write with your own flair and voice this is a big thing everyone has their own way of storytelling so try to put as much of yourself into it as possible because you know it's, it's going to be more authentic because th then it's you <laughs> don't try to be someone else be yourself even if you don't have scripting experience just jump in and write from your own unique perspective and keep in mind your what why and who as your foundations okay very very important it will really help you decide the tone of voice and you know voice your writing too as well all right so now, developing your story shot by shot, okay? So storyboards are a great tool to use to plan out your video. Now, I run a 2D, 3D, and whiteboard animation company, and of course, I know, of course, storyboards are so important. Uh, when I'm doing whiteboard animation, I do do, I do it slightly different than what they do here. I write the, um, the uh, actual text and everything, um, the voiceover, so I write that down, and then I do sketches as it goes. But a lot of people prefer to have it in boxes, whatever works for you. But storyboards can be a great help. So you don't need to be an artist to sketch out your video plan. You really don't. Start with your beginning, middle, and end, and then plan each shot in detail. The whole point of the sketch is to help you. <laughs> you know, you're not going to put this out for an exhibition. Okay, so the more you plan here, the easier it is to actually shoot your video. Now, believe me, that thing, one hour spent planning, is the same as, you know, you could get rid of 10 hours, you know, trying to actually do the thing. So there are digital tools available, if you prefer, such as storyboardthat.com. Um, Tessa will give you the link there for that. Uh, that is, um, uh, sorry, where was I going? Um, the <laughs> uh, storyboardthat.com. You could even actually write your storyboard out as a shot list if you don't want to draw the visuals. You know, the important thing here is to consider the details. Always think of the details. For each cons for each shot, consider your goal, you know. Is this part of the hook, engage, or CTA part of, you know, your story? The visuals, what can be seen in the shot, background, item, you know, person. If I'm wearing something where I'm... You know what I mean? It's the same background as, you know, white, you know, so you can only just see my head. Uh, maybe not floating head, <laughs> unless, of course, you're trying to do that with it. Then the visuals, what you know, so with the visuals as well, think of, are there any logos you can see in the background? Preferably not. The whole point is you're presenting yourself, not other people's um, stuff. Audio sound, what can be heard in the shot? Music or talking, it's so important, the sound. And the research has been done, a lot of people leave the video because of the bad sound. So that's very vital. Props, what's needed to make this shot effective, okay? Crew, okay, do you need help? Do you need someone to be filming? Or is your camera placed somewhere stationary, you know, maybe on a tripod? Do you need some something passing to the presenter whilst in the shot? Those kind of things, kind of questions you ask. Now, with all your research and planning done, the next thing is to consider is your equipment, okay, which we brought up a couple of times. So start, please, with what you have. 
Now, you may think you need to have access to a fancy studio or start thinking about turning the spare room into a studio or move the kids to the garage so you have space for lots of new equipment. But, you know, don't go too far. <laughs> I mean, I've got a, cool, a kind of studio here, obviously. But the point is you don't have to go too far. All right, let's have a look. So enhance your video further. Now, a couple of different points. We've looked at a few things that are vital to have before uploading your video. Here are a few low cost options to take your video making to the next step, all right? Now, tripod. Now, as mentioned, um, oh, sorry, yes, I just remember the other one I was mentioning to you, I think, was it Fiona who asked? Um, is DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is another piece of software you can use, a little more complicated, but it is free. You can use the free version and it's, it's pretty good. But again, just use what you can manage. Don't take on something which is way too complicated for you to, to use. Now, um, so here are a few low cost things. Tripod. Now, as I've mentioned before, a steady held camera is going to look a lot more professional, okay? A phone tripod is affordable and the results are valuable, really, they are. There are also options for filming on the Move handheld gimbal. So it can actually move to the different, but that's, again, that's money, careful. Lighting, there are lots of affordable LED lights. Now, LED lights do tend towards to being a little bit more expensive, but they are available to buy online. Um, we generally use Elgato is a, a one particularly for online uh, talks and everything. So it enables you to have more flexibility for where and when you shoot. Make sure the light is coming from behind the camera. So of course, it's, on, so it's shining on the person. Direct it towards what you're actually capturing. I've got two lights just for your information. I've got a light over there. I've got an aperture over there. It's a light, special light, which is uh, yellow color. So the combination from both sides helps a little bit. I normally have it a little bit brighter because of the... Um, the light from above, uh, but at the moment, of course, uh, because the sun has very much set, of course, I can reduce this quite a bit. There we go. And of course, you can see as I reduce it, it changes quite a bit. The, um, you know, you can still see me quite clearly. Now, a lot of people, when they get LED lights, they go like this. You know, okay, my camera's adjusting to it, which is fair enough. But to a large extent, a lot of cameras don't, and what will tend to happen is you look like you look like a ghost. So be very careful. Often, fourteen percent. If you haven't got other lighting coming in, fourteen percent is fine. Sometimes you've got other lighting competing against. Sometimes you need to go up to fifty, whatever, fifty percent. But okay. Now, microphone. Obviously, of course, you need to be heard. It's so important. So. If there's anything you might need to really think about getting, then of course it is a microphone. Um, now, there's different kinds of microphone you can use. This is a condenser. There's ones which is all built in and everything, uh, which is cheaper, which you can get, which works fine and everything. There's directional, so it's from behind the camera pointing, so it picks up particularly just that little area. Um, okay, but that's more expensive. And then you've got video editing software. As I've mentioned, um, the different ones, as you get more experience with creating content, you may decide to purchase more sophisticated editing program. It gives you more options. That's the whole point. Uh, more, more advanced ones will give you more options. But the point is you need to be able to use it and not get too overwhelmed by it and spend too much time on it. Okay. So top tips to think about. Consider what can be seen. What's in the background? What's on your clothes? You know, avoid prints or choose clear backgrounds and be careful about the logos that you can actually see whilst filming. Very important. Um, everything you wear or display sends a message and adds to your story. Make sure your outfit contrasts with your background so you don't you don't blend in, you know, a floating head here. Choose your space carefully. Try and find a room with clothes or carpets in. Might sound so much so surprising, but it helps avoid echoes. Camera positions, consider angles and movements. Think about how your video will actually open and close and what the key moments in between are. How will this affect your sound? Consider recording your audio separately. Use a free audio app like RecForge or Recorder Plus and actually record your audio file with a separate device to the one you're actually filming with. Okay. Now, considering all the detail prior to filming and while shooting is going to make the editing process easier. All right. All right, so five steps to basic edit. So best time 
to start thinking about editing is during the writing stage, the very start stage. By envisioning your edits early on, you can anticipate how your video will look and how you want your viewers to react. This usually makes it easier for you when you actually sit down to edit because, you know, you have a clear vision of, you know, presenting your story. So import and organize your footage, add visuals and sound effects, check your sound, make sure you do that, make color corrections and export and upload your video. All right. Questions? Tessa's answering them all. She's amazing. And there's 10 minutes left. Don't worry. Tranquila. Everything's fine. Let's move on. So get discovered and track your success. Now, our final section, of course, today is going to highlight the simple ways to help your content be discovered and how to track your success. Of course, how do you know if you are moving closer to your goal? What is available to support you further? So a couple of different things. Enhance your video's discovery. So use keywords. Research those keywords. There's Google Ads you can use. There's Google Trends different things you can use. And once you upload your video, it's important to include searchable video titles, descriptions, and tags to make it easier for people to find your video, even if they're not specifically looking for it, okay? Understand your keywords, okay? YouTube is the second biggest search engine behind Google, as I've said already, for, for videos. Well-written descriptions with the right keywords can boost views and watch time by helping your videos show up in the search results. Using common terms like how to review, 10 solutions to, you know, all those different things. Optimizing your video SEO around your existing keywords will help your video get found initially. Very important. So write searchable titles and descriptions. You know, reinforce important words. Descriptions can convey valuable information that helps viewers find your videos in search results and understand what they're actually, they will actually be watching. Well-written descriptions with the right keywords can boost views and watch time because they actually may help your video to appear in search results. Now, identify one or two, one to two main words to describe your video and feature them prominently in both your description and the title. Reinforce important words. Mini lemon meringue pies appears in this video's title and description, which increases the likelihood that YouTube could surface the video in search results. Give an overview of your video using natural language, not just a stream of keywords, please. You've got to be careful, streams of keywords. Um, identify content type. For example, how to, so that it's clear what your video is about. What are the examples we see here? So we've got a sort of 10 steps, how to, easy recipe, reaction video. Label with brand or series if needed, you know, to help people search for similar videos. Who's done this? You know, Mama Cherry in description, Super Sorrel in title for these two examples we've got here. Keep your description short and visible. Consider how your description starts. So this is a section that can be read easily. So you can see, you know, in these three examples, you can only see the first two lines. So important. All right. Uh, add video tags to help viewers find your content. All right. Use the tags during the video upload. Include words from your title and the mix of both general and specific tags to thoroughly and accurately describe your video. Example here shows, for example, we've got hall, a hash hall. Uh, hash toy hall, hash shopping hall, for example. I'll just show that to you so you can see it a little bit better there. Now, consider information not communicated in your title and description. Think about how you search on YouTube. Always relate it back to yourself. Build your community, integrate your channel into your website, social media, email. You can, you can embed it in different places and in any way you are visible online. It's an excellent way to get your videos in front of interested viewers, encourage continued interaction with your brand, and help to spread your story further. You know, add links to your emails, videos to your blogs, share teasers across your social pages, add your social media handles in, uh, into your description page, use the community tab to in interact directly with your subscribers, which build trust and loyalty. You can also add buttons to your YouTube banner to make your viewers direct, take your viewers directly to your other pages. Okay. Promote and integrate your channel. You know, as well as doing this from your YouTube channel, you can do it from other social pages too. 
give teasers across other social pages to encourage views to um to your youtube page you want to be creating a community around your brand and get your community to spread the word so what has mama cherry done here to promote her youtube channel on other other platforms she's adding her social platform links onto her youtube channel she's added links to her youtube channel to her social platforms she's got consistent branding and tone of voice integrated youtube videos on her social media pages and if you head over to her website you'll also see that she has integrated her youtube videos into her site it's a great way to make the most of your content as well as reach more viewers as well okay Understand your users with analytics. Now, YouTube analytics, of course, records your channel progress. Who is actually watching the time of day and where in the world are they? It even shows you how long the viewers stayed on your video. Why did they leave at that point? Is there a weak point about it or there's a reason? Okay. To access your analytics page, okay, you can see over here, sign into your YouTube studio page and select analytics from the left-hand menu. You can see there on the screen. Within YouTube analytics, you'll be able to look through different tabs to help you see data that's most relevant to your goals. Okay. And of course, what types of content you are driving viewers to your channel, drill into the list of videos driving suggested for each one of your own videos, Are there any specific trends, formats, themes that are more prevalent than others. Now, what creators uh, your audiences has an affinity for as part of, you know, the previous point is also worth looking at source channels for each video. Do any of these creators represent collaboration um, opportunities particularly? Sorry about that. I think something appeared on the screen. We're still continuing. The reach and scope of your content. Of course, as a big picture consideration, you should also look at the percentage of your watch time coming from suggested traffic overall. Okay. Measuring your success on YouTube. Okay, I'd love to know if my content is reaching users. Okay. So there's different things you can use. Impressions. Now, an impression is logged every time a viewer comes across one of your video thumbnails on YouTube. Be aware, this does not include traffic from notifications, end screens, or external embeds or links. Think of each impression as a potential reach on YouTube, an opportunity to earn a, a view. And then, of course, there's click-through rate. So this is when they've actually clicked on it, what percentage of your views on YouTube tuned into views and actually effectively measures how often viewers watched a video, you know, after seeing an impression. So impressions just appear somewhere on the screen, click-through rate, CTR is when they've actually clicked on it. And views, YouTube video views reflect how many times a video has been watched and can be an important measure of a video's overall popularity. So are my viewers into, interested? Average view duration can help you. Now, average view duration will give you an estimated time, minutes watched per view on a piece of content. It's important as it allows you to know how long viewers are watching a video before mo moving on to another piece of content. Watch time charts how long viewers have spent watching your content. This gives you a sense of what content viewers actually watch as opposed to videos that they click on and then abandon. Now, once you have your results, you can adapt and change your content. Trends change, so don't be afraid to try something that is new. Okay, so let us move on to the questions now. Uh, pausing for questions. Ah, great, we've got one. Tessa's too kind. She's given me one. So, Engines asked here, where can we see most searched keywords on YouTube? Okay, yes. Good question. You, I, uh, you, you'll need to, to a certain extent, um, you, it's trends largely. With YouTube, you can find out a lot of these different things with trends to help you, the tip, uh, typical topics and everything. Um, there's also, uh, so those will be the main places. Um, you can even use Google Trends to a certain extent for YouTube as well. So you can use it in that context as well. So I hope that helps you a little bit, Engine. Um, of course, it's always got to do with what you are using. There are some other um, third-party software. I'm afraid I can't uh, cover everything today. But check it out. There are some There are some different... Moz, by the way, can help you a little bit. M-O-Z. Uh, they give you quite a lot of different useful videos to help you. 
Um, I hope that helps you a little bit, Engine, but you might need to go a little bit further with that to help you with the different elements. All right, so let's just go through the takeaways today. So first and foremost, find your niche, of course, answering your what your passion is, why you want to create content, and who's going to watch it and give it you a clear foundation to create content with purpose. And then, of course, capture attention with engaging content. Take your time before building, research and plan, Choose the right kind of content. Create with confidence. Be consistent. Once you decide what you're doing, you know, keep showing up for your audience and get found and track your success. Keywords will help you to be found. Use YouTube analytics to track your success and make changes where necessary. And don't be afraid to try new content. All right. So what are the next steps? You've got quite a few next steps to do now. So um, just to remind you, there is one-to-one -one mentoring. So a uh, small business or charity in the UK, sign up for Google uh, Mentoring, g.co UK Mentoring. And I want to thank you all for your great questions and everything, which, of course, Tessa has answered 99.99%. Uh, we're going to wrap up here as we're out of time. I hope that has been a useful dive into creating videos uh, for YouTube. As I mentioned at the beginning of the session, if you are interested in more training from Google Digital Garage, there are a few ways you can continue learning. Google Digital Garage webinars in different subjects. You can see the link there below. Also, Google Digital Garage um, online training, uh, that, for example, fundamentals of digital marketing, different things like that, 24-7, uh, you can find there. And finally, if you have any feedback or questions, please do, please do provide them now. If you want to go even further, there's team at the digitalgarage.co.uk, which is also the bottom of the description below. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. Thank you for all your contributions, for all your questions and everything. Thank you, Tessa, for replying to all of those different answers, uh, all those different questions and everything. And we look forward to welcoming you again to another Google Digital Garage training session soon. Thank you. <laughs>